Hello everyone, welcome back! For you, the time change may appear to be instantaneous, but to me it's been four months. A global pandemic happened, so go figure. I locked myself in my apartment for four months. But now I'm back, so let's continue. Uh, in this video we'll look at some common features of different uh, ordinal differential ODE solvers and then um, from that in another video we will build a superclass that we can inherit from because you, you need a lot of the same stuff. So this is an important bit to, to kind of um, cover and we'll also go through some of the most important uh, ODE solver methods or algorithms if you will. that. That is out there in the in the big algorithm uh, rainforest. All right, we've already talked about the forward Euler the forward Euler uh, method, but we will include that one as well because just to remember where we where we where we are. This one computes the solution to an ODE. It computes the next step from the current step by multiplying the time step size with uh, the right hand side input function which may be a function dependent on uk and tk like that and uh, this uh, delta t is usually just a difference between the, the time points right like so because we mentioned the forward euler we might as well mention the backward euler as well which uh, is very similar backward euler in the backward Euler method, we compute the next uh, time step, k plus 1, from the previous one again, and add to it the, uh, the time step times the right hand side function, but at this, this time evaluated at uh, the next time step steps, or the solution and the time step, so that is uk plus 1 and t k plus 1. So you sort of look backwards instead of forwards in a manner and that's where it gets its name and the uh, the time step is the same as before. Another slightly more advanced method is uh, the leapfrog method which you might have heard of. Some some people call it the, the midpoint uh, method and here we also compute the next step in the solution uk plus 1 as not the current one, but the one before that, the last step. And we add to that 2 times the time step divide, uh, multiplied by the, uh, the input function of the current time, like so. Uh, and this 2 times the time step is equal to tk plus 1 minus tk minus 1. So there you sort of see why it's called the midpoint method because we we look at you know the the, the next uh, the next point and the previous one and we're sort of in the middle so yeah that's why we call it that. Uh, we also ho have something called the uh, Hoynes method, which is a two-step procedure. So here we first compute a an uh, an intermediate step called u star or u temporary or something like that from the the current u the current a solution point. Uh, add to that delta t times f of u k u and t k, just like forward Euler, right? And then we compute the next u in the following manner. We start with the u k again, and we add half at delta t. Multiply it with the same thing u k t k. We add half of the input function evaluated at this temporary u. This is the same thing as the one up here. And at the next time step. So it's a bit more sophisticated and it's slightly more accurate, I, I think. Uh, there's a range of methods called the runge cutter methods. Uh, one of those methods is the, the second order. The second order, runge, I think they're German and cutter method. In the second order method we compute the next solution step with the, the present step or the current step and we add to it some a number k2 and this number k2 is defined as delta t 
times the input function or the right outside function evaluated at u k plus half of some other number k1 and evaluated at tk plus half a time step and the k1 which is the last remaining thing oh sorry you can't see that there you go which is the last thing you cannot um, that we need here is uh, delta t times um, the right hand side function evaluated at uk and tk and perhaps the most famous and most vi widely used method for solving ODEs is the fourth order uh, Runge-Kutta or runge uh, method. So this is the fourth RK, you usually just write RK. It's some, it's because it's so popular, it's, it's sometimes just called the runge -Kutta method. And here we have uh, four of these, these different K values instead of two, two of them, as in the, the second order method. So in the fourth order, we have UK plus one equals the current UK plus one sixth of all these K1 plus two of a K2 value plus two K3 and plus two of a K, oh, sorry, and a K4 at the end. And all these, uh, we need to define all of these Ks, obviously where k1 is equal to delta t times our uh, f evaluated at uk and tk and k2 is also delta t times our, uh, our f value uh, but this time evaluated at uk plus one half of k1 and tk plus one half of the the time step. And k3 is a bit similar. We do the same thing, delta t at f, uk plus a half, but this time a half of k2. Uh, and the same thing for the uh, tk plus one half delta t. I think that's correct. Yep. And the k4 is equal to delta t f uk plus k3 not a half this time tk plus a full time step so those are all the the case uh, so there you go that's the fourth order runge kutta methods and there are higher order runge kutta methods and there's also something called the third order adam bashworth method but this one is the one that is most used in solving ordinary differential equations so to sort of sum up what all these methods have in common in order to build a superclass in our ODE solver superclass. What we need is uh, we need to store our uh, solution uh, u as a function of t as some sort of uh, array and we need to hold corresponding values of t in some sort of array and uh, we need to have some information about the right hand side that is our function of u and t, which and this needs to be some sort of callable Python object, callable. And uh, what more do we need? We need to hold the current step number, so current step k, and we need an initial condition, so u zero. This is our initial condition. That's where we start. And this uh, ODE solver superclass also need to have some, some methods or functions. So we need to implement uh, the loop over all time steps, time steps. So in the superclass, what we will will do, we will uh, we write a method called solve. So this will be in the superclass, uh, but in each class, uh, which will define each of the methods that we wrote down up here. I don't know if you'll implement all of them. We will uh, define a method called the advance method, which will define what uh, or tell the computer what to do when we advance the method one time step, because that's the only real difference between all of them. Well, that's it for this video. In the next one, we will implement our superclass and uh, also a few of the, the methods that we mentioned here. So see you there.